question four. Okay, so I want to read this question out loud, and you guys are going to see there's two contradictions on the wording of this guy here. So this could throw off a student completely, right? So I don't, I recall that some students came up to me after the exam last year complaining about this, and I'm sure that the lecturer was lenient when marking these, but I'll remove any doubts you might have when we read this. Okay, so we have a regenerative gas turbine power plant with two stages of compression and two stages of expansion. So I would love for you guys to highlight when we have two stages because this throws off so many students. Because when it says the overall pressure ratio, and I might actually highlight this twice, the overall pressure ratio being nine, that means that's the overall that's taken into account both, both stages, right? And we talked about that. We want, if we want to know what's the individual pressure ratio, we probably want to do pressure ratio for big R so it's not confused with the uh, relative pressure. Right? If you want to know the individual pressure ratio for each of the stages, we need to take the root, okay, of the overall one, so in this case nine, depending on how many stages we have. So it can be the square root, the um, cube root, or anything like that. In our case, we have two stages, right? So for this specific case here, we're going to have two over here. Oops, that went away. Two there. So that means that our individual stages, the pressure ratio for our individual stages is three. Not nine, not something else, but three. Okay, and that's something that's going to throw off so many people. The working fluid is argon, and it enters each of the stages of the compressor at 300, and each of the stages of the turbine at 1,200 Kelvin. Okay, and we'll, let's put that on the drawing in a second. But then comes some of the contradictions. Accounting for the variation of specific heat with temperature, determine the minimum mass flow rate of air needed to develop a net power output of 110 megawatts. Treat argon as an ideal gas with constant specific heat. Okay, so you can see these are completely opposed statements. One is saying, please account for the variation of that. The other one says, please treat the specific heat as a constant. So if I'm a student, I'm looking at the exam, I'm, I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do, right? Completely different things. Now, I don't know how this went, but I would imagine that both things would be completely valid, right? If the question um, was written like this. The reason why I think this happened is probably this was a different question and whoever created this question changed it up, but didn't really um, remember to remove some things that need to be removed, okay? If I'm a student and I'm choosing between these two, I'm definitely choosing the bottom one. I'm definitely taking this one away just because it's so much easier to deal with constant specific heats, right? So I'm gonna solve it that way. But if you were confused by this last year or something, you probably did, if you did it the other way around, that would be probably fine too. The other conflicting information here says that we're dealing with argon, but then it says, what's the minimum mass flow rate of air? And this slips by a lot of people, but it did get some people confused when they were doing the exam. When I was looking at this question yesterday, I didn't even notice this, but then afterwards, I've noticed when I read it with a bit more caution. Okay, so this is not air, this is supposed to be argon here. So this is not air, this is argon. Okay, so at least with this information, we can solve it without being confused because it all makes sense. Okay, we're looking for a net power output of a 10 mega 110 megawatts okay so if we can find the what is the mass flow rate for that we need to see okay so we need that power output um power output and we just need to divide by what is the energy that this cycle gives us every single time right we're going to be having watts divided by kilo joules per kilogram that's going to give us a mass flow rate what else do we need? We're gonna go jump into table A2 and we're gonna grab properties for argon. I'm gonna grab my CP for argon and I'm gonna grab my K for argon. This one being 1.667 and CP, I don't recall any graph table. Argon table, it's 0 0.5203. Okay, and if, if you, got to this point in which you have the right pressure ratio and you remember how a regenerative gas turbine power plant works you're probably good to go because the solving of it is quite simple 
Now, if you're doing the exam, you have to remember that the regenerative, regenerative system looks like this, right? And the whole idea behind the system is that, let's do a little dotted line here. Another dotted line. The whole idea is that instead of going from eight all the way down to one and wasting all this energy, waste quote unquote, okay? What I will do is I'll take this energy, I'm gonna put it back to my system. That's my Q regeneration right there. And this allows me to, instead of going from four all the way up to five and doing this big jump in energy here, what I can do is I'm gonna go with the Q regeneration to this state here, and then all the Q in that I need to put into the system is this Q in over here. And then because I have two turbines, obviously I'm gonna have another one over here. But likewise, instead of throwing all this energy away, I'm just throwing away, quote unquote, throw away, okay? Just throwing away this one here and this one here. Okay? If we think about it in terms of those little diagrams, I like to do, we're going from state four all the way to state five. And still there's no way around this um, other than putting energy to the system, right? That's the first, first law tells us. But in this case, we can have Q gen, Q regeneration helping out here. And then our Q in only has to be that little um, strong green. Oh, this one in blue. Right? So that's what's happening in the system. Now, the entrance of each of the compressors, uh, Argon enters each of the compressors at 300 and each of the turbines at 1200. So it enters the compressor over here. This is um, right here. First compressor, second compressor, right? First expansion, second expansion. So it's entering one and three at 300 Kelvin. And it's entering the five and seven at 1200. Okay, so what are we gonna do in this problem? Well, we're gonna do the following. We're gonna find, find what is the temperature four, which happens to be the same as temperature two. We're gonna find what is the temperature six, which happens to be the same as temperature eight. Then, once we have those temperatures, we can relate how much, what is the um, net output of the cycle by relating the work of the turbine, one plus the work of turbine two, minus the work of the compressor one minus the work of the compressor two. Okay, and if you notice, because they're exactly the same, the whatever uh, work output from these guys is gonna be the same. So this can be simplified further to two times the work of any of the turbines minus two times the work required for any of the compressors. So if you, if you can find the compressor, the work of the turbines and the compressors, we can find work net for the cycle. If we can find work net for the cycle, we can find mass flow rate. Okay, and it all starts with us finding the temperatures. And then the beauty of using constant specific heats is that we can do um, this, right? P2, P1, K minus one, minus one over K is to be T2, T1. And we can use this on both instances to find T2 and T6. And then we just have to use um, the fact that delta H will be equal to Cp delta T for these guys. Okay, so it's very, very simple to solve this. Let's find T2 first. And mind you, this could be T2 or T4, it's the same thing. So um, P2 over P1, K minus one K has to be equal to T2 over T1. So therefore, uh, three, 0 0.667 divided by 1.667 equals T2 that I'm after divided by 300. So therefore, T2 equals 400 and something. 65.6, back me up, okay, on the maths. Okay, as easy as that, as simple as that. So this guy here, let's plug it in here. So this guy here is 465.6 Kelvin. And this is the same for both, right? Yeah, that's right. Cool, thank you. 
uh, we can do the same process on the next one. And then mind you guys, there's two ways you can set up this equation. They're gonna be the same thing. I right? can do P6 over P5, which I guess is the more natural way of doing it. Or you can do P5 over P6, whatever rocks your boat. Um, the, the, the solving of it, the, the, like the mechanics of solving it is gonna be slightly different, but the answer is gonna be exactly the same. The only thing to be to, that might get you on this is that, let's go up here. Note that my state five has a higher state of energy than six and has a higher pressure, right? So pressure five is greater than pressure six. So if I'm putting the pressure ratio there, it's gonna be P6 over P5 is gonna be one third and not three, right? And you'll notice that if you put three, you're gonna get a T6 that's greater than 1200, which completely beats this idea here, right? You have a pressure that will, uh, sorry, a temperature that will be over here. So even if you, if you flip it around and you forget about that, hopefully you're gonna to come to your senses when you find your final T and you see that that's not, that cannot be, right? So that's gonna be one third, six, six, seven, six, six, seven, T6 that we're looking for, and this is 1200. So my T6 equals seven, seven, 3.2 Kelvin. And this has to also be the same as T8. Once again, if you guys could back up the math, that would be great, great. So this is seven. Yeah, that's seven. all good too. Cool, thank you. All right, so now we'll just be happy about it, right? Let's find out what is the, um, um, the works that these individual systems are giving out. So turbine, and this can be the first turbine, the second one doesn't really matter, let's do first turbine, this makes more sense, is gonna be the difference in enthalpy five and six. And when you can find out, because this is um, treating CPs as constant, that means that we can see the CP delta T, which will be zero point, whatever that is, five, two, oh, three, and then 1200 minus the seven, seven, 3.2. Um, and if I want to find the total, so let's say if I want to find the, the combination of them, so if I want to find total turbine work, that's just going to be two times turbine work one. Okay, so that's just going to be two times the 0 0.5203, 1200 minus 773.2. And let me just put the units down here kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin times Kelvin. Sorry, Pablo, just quickly on um, the work of the turbine one. Is that H3 minus H6? This is a five, it's just a horrible five. Ah, good. <laughs> yep, uh, so going from five to six, right? So this is the first turbine here. Poor writing on my part. Um, so the work of the turbine, if we do this bit of math, that's 444.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Yeah, so that's the total um, output of the turbine. So both turbines. And likewise, you can do the same thing for the strange colors. You can do the same thing for the uh, compressor, right? So the sum of the work of both compressors I'll just be two times 0 0.5203 multiplied by difference in temperature. So four, <clears throat> 465.6 minus 300. <clears throat> and this turns out to be 172.3. Stop me if you get different values. It should be good. Which means that, <clears throat> according to our calculations, the work net of this cycle right, will be, let's say, the sum of the turbines minus the sum of the compressors, which is just going to be literally just 444 minus 172, which is 200. 71.8 kilo 
the juice for the killing whales. And to finish this guy off, what do we need? Uh, we were asked for the mass flow rate, and we had that equation set up before. So the mass flow rate, if 100, 100, if I want 110 megawatts, that's the same thing as 110, 110 to the third kilowatts. Okay, I'm gonna write, go ahead and write kilowatts as kilojoules per second. And I'm gonna divide that by 271.8 kilojoules per kilograms. And this is gonna give me 404.7. And then for the units, we are doing kilojoules per second, dividing that by kilojoules per kilogram. So it's the same thing as inverse, right? If you wanted to think about that way too, just the inverse of the multiplication. So kilograms per second. So, Avargan, shall we put for Avargan, just for the sake of it, Avargan? So what are we saying? We're saying that on this cycle, on this cycle, this power plant that's operating with Argon, if we want it to output 110 megawatts, we need this guy to have 404.7 kilograms per second of Argon going through the cycle. And right, that's the mass flow input that we need on this cycle. Any questions? <laughs>